Hello YouTube. Oh, oh, let me fix that. Ah, oh, there you go. And now it is nighttime, as you can tell. I'm in my pajamas. But before I go to sleep and you all rest for this wondrous night, Jinx is gonna read you all a beautiful bedtime story from the wondrous book, The Complete Fairy Tales of Grimm's. So for your story time, tonight I shall read, read to you all The Frog King. Are you ready? <clears throat> In case I need water. Let me just put on these glasses. I had to remove my hat. Oh, fuck, my hair's all deformed now. Oh, well, I'll be sleeping soon anyway. Now, these glasses are not reading glasses, uh, but I thought I'd put these glasses on for special effect. They're actually just to see close up, but, or was it far away? It was one of the two. I think it's close up. Yeah, close up. All right. So, here we go. In old time. When wishing still helped one, there lived a king whose daughters were all beautiful. But the youngest was so beautiful that the sun itself, which has been seen so much, was astonished whenever it shone in her face. Close by the king's castle, there lay a great dark forest. Mmm, I like dark forests. That's where all the kinky shit happens. Back to the story. And under an old lime tree, in the forest was a well. And when the day was very warm, the king's child went out into the forest and sat down. By the side of the cool fountain. And when she was dull, she took a golden ball. And threw it up on high, it up on high and caught it. And this ball was her favorite plaything. Now, it so happened that, the, that on one occasion, the princess's golden ball did not fall into the little hand which she was holding up for it. But on the ground beyond and rolled straight into the water, the king's dollar da daughter followed it with her eyes. But it vanished. Oof. And the well was deep, so deep the bottom could not be seen. On this, she began to cry, and cried louder and louder, and could not be comforted. And as she thus laminated, someone said to her, Oh, thus lament, lamented someone said to her, my apologies. What ails thee, king's daughter? Thou weepest, weepest, so that even a stone would show pity. She looked around to the side from whence the voice came and saw the frog stretching forth its thick, ugly head. Oh, poor guy. You can't be all that ugly. From the water. Ah, old water splasher, is it thou, she said, I am weeping for my golden ball, 
which has fallen into the well. Be quiet, and do not weep, answered the frog. I can help thee, but what wilt thou give me? Oh, he gam really kinky now. If I bring thy plaything up again, whatever thou wilt have, dear frog, said she, my clothes, my pearls and jewels, even the golden crown, which I am wearing. Ooh, ooh, damn. The frog answered, I do not care for thy clothes, thy pearls and jewels, or thy golden crown. But if thou wilt love me, and let me be thy companion, and play a fellow, and sit by thee at thy little table, and eat off thy little golden plate, and drink out of thy little cup, and sleep in thy little bed. If thou wilt promise me this, I will go down below and bring thy, thee thy golden ball up again. Oh yes, said she, I promise thee all thou wishest, if thou wilt but bring me my ball back again. She, however, thought how the, the silly frog does talk. He lives in the water with the other frogs and croaks and can be no companion to any human being. But the frog, when he had received this promise, but hit, put his head into the water and sank down, and in a short while came swimming up again with the ball in his mouth, and threw it on the grass. The king's daughter was delighted to see her pretty plaything once more, and picked it up and ran away with it. Wait, wait, said the frog. Take me with thee. Oh, oh dear. I can't run as thou canst. canst. But what did it avail him to scream? His croak, croak after her. As loudly as he could, she did not listen to it, but ran home and soon forgot the poor frog. Aw, who was forced to go back into his well again. The next day, when she had seated herself at table with the king and all the curt... Cur fucker... Curtiriers, and was eating from her little golden plate, Fuck, I lost my place. Oh, found it. Something came creeping. Splish, splash, splish, splash. Up the marble staircase. And when it had got to the top, it knocked at the door and cried, Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. She ran to see who was outside. But when she opened the door, there sat the frog in front of it. Then she slammed the door, too, in great haste, sat down to dinner again, and was quite frightened. The king saw plainly that her heart was beating violently, and said, My child, what art thou so afraid of? There perchance a giant outside who wants to carry thee away? Ah, no, replied she, it is no giant, but a disgusting frog. Poor frog. What does a frog want with thee? Ah, dear father, yesterday, as I was in the forest, sitting by the well, playing, my golden ball fell into the water. And because I cried to the frog, brought... Oh, and because I cried, so the frog brought... It out again for me. And because he s insisted so on it, I promised him he should be my companion. But I never thought he would be able to come out of his water 
and now he is outside there and wants to come in to me. In the meantime, it knocked a second time and cried, Princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Don't thou not know what thou said, saidest to me? Yesterday, by the cool waters of the fountain, princess, youngest princess, open the door for me. Then said the king, That which thou hast promised must thou perform. Go and let him in. She went and opened the door, and the frog hopped in and followed her, step by step, to her chair. There he sat and cried, Lift me up beside thee. She delayed until the, at last, the king commanded her to do it. Oh, daddy said so. When the frog was once on the, was once on the chair. He wanted to be on the table, and when he was on the table, he said, Now push thy little golden plate nearer to me, that we may eat together. She did this, but it was easy to see that she did not do it willingly. Ah, uh, she didn't have made that promise, lady. The frog enjoyed what he ate, but almost every mouthful she took choked her. Ew, is it like frog slime? At l length he said, I have eaten and am satisfied. Now I am tired. Carry me into thy little room and make thy little silken bed ready. And we will both lie down and go to sleep. Oh, it's getting kind of creepy. The king's daughter began to cry for she was afraid of the cold frog, which she did not like to touch and which was now to sleep in her pretty, clean little bed. But the king grew angry and said, He who helped thee when thou wert in trouble, ought not of afterwards to be despised by thee. So she took hold of the frog with two fingers, carried him upstairs, and put him in a corner. But when she was in bed, he crept to her, and said, I am tired. I want to sleep as well as thou. Lift me up, or I will tell thy father. Oh, now he's throwing the daddy roll. Then she was terribly angry and took him up and threw him with all her might against the wall. Oh, that's animal cruelty, bitch. Oh, karma gonna hit you hard. Now thou wilt be quiet, odious frog, said she. But when he fell down, he was no frog, but a king's son, with beautiful kind eyes. He, by her father's will, was now her dear companion and husband. Then he told her how he had been bewitched by a wicked witch. Oh, damn. And how no one could have delivered him from the well but herself, and that tomorrow they would go together into his kingdom. Then they went to sleep. And the next morning, when the sun awoke them, a, cur a courage came driving up with eight white horses, horses, carriage, well, I fucked it up, which had white ostrich feathers on their heads and were Harnessed with golden chains, and behind stood the young king's servant, faithful Henry. Henry. Faithful Henry had been so unhappy with his, when his master was changed into a frog that he had caused three iron bands to be laid around his heart, lest it should burst with grief and sadness. The carriage was to conduct the young king into his kingdom. Faithful Henry helped them both in and placed himself behind again and was full of joy because of the deli this deliverance. And when they had driven a part of the way, the king's son heard a cracking behind him as if something had broken. So he turned around and cried, Henry, the carriage is breaking. No, master, it is not. The carriage is a band from my heart, which was put there in my great pain when you are a frog and imprisoned in the well. Again and once again, 
while they were on their way, something cracked. And each time the king's son thought that the carriage was breaking, but it was only the bands which were springing from the heart of faithful Henry, because his master was set free and was happy. The end. I hope you all enjoyed your nighttime story from the complete fairy tales of Grimm's. Jinx hopes you enjoyed this, and if you like this story and want me to do more from the complete fairy tales of Grimm's, I, Jinx, will personally do the next story. The next story in the said book is actually the giant and the tailor. So, if you want me to do the next story, hit like, hit subscribe for the channel, hit the notification for you to gain more notifications about new videos coming up. Also, I'm hoping to gain at least 50 or more likes on this video. I hope you all enjoyed Fist Bama Llama, and I hope you all loved the story. I'm sorry for the couple words mess messed up. Um, I was trying to focus on it and the camera, but for now on, I think I figured it out near the end with the Henry. So I hope you enjoyed and hope I can read you the next story. I love the Grimm's Tales, especially the Fairy Tales complete story. So have a wonderful night. Sleep tight. Don't let the gremlins bite. Or anything that could come out of this book. Or many others. But, night night, fist bomb and moment high.